Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Uh, I've got two things for you today. In a, in a minute I'm going to um, have a flip through the next volume, volume two of Golden Hands. If you're as ancient as me you'll remember this from back in the 70s. Um, it's a serialised uh, weekly needle craft magazine really that all goes together into it was 75 issues all together uh, which went together into five volumes um, and it's still a really useful reference today and it's just a lovely nostalgic blast from the past to have a look through and even if you're a whippersnapper and you don't remember it the ideas and the information in there are actually still very relevant and still quite inspiring so I'm going to have a flip through Last time I did the whole of volume one in one go and it was a bit, a bit long really. So this time I'm going to go about halfway through volume two. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you um, an idea that I've got, or a couple of ideas, a few ideas that I've got in the pipeline that I'll be um, starting over the next couple of weeks. Um, you might want to you might want to join in and start gathering some stuff together. So let me let me show you what I've got. I suppose I'll just, just push me over here. <laughs> so this was... Um, you might remember, if, if you um, are a regular viewer, you might remember I was very lucky and got sent two um, scrap packs from Bazaar. And I've bought them lots of times before because I just love them and I'm always raving about how brilliant they are. But um, Joe very kindly sent me sent me these two um, and I was, I was blown away. It was just so sweet of her to do that. Um, so this is the kind of thing you get in the Bazaar scrap packs. You get a mixture of you'll get fine sort of silks like this you'll get some beautiful pieces like that it's random they're all fabrics reclaimed from garments from factory floors from so what bazaar do is they joe works over in india with the local people there and they bring things over here to their store over here their fair trade policy is so good and I just love the stuff that they sell. So I'm just sort of quickly running through this. This was two packs mixed together. The packs come in different colourways. You choose which colour you want. I think there are six different colourways now. You'll get them. So I, yeah, I've mixed the two. I think I had the pink and the green. These probably were. Um, you'll get a mixture of cottons, heavier fabrics, lots of silks. And then just, I mean, look at that. It's lovely, isn't it? It doesn't look the colour is just beautiful in real life. My my camera and lighting situation never does the colours justice. And you also get lots of uh, bits and pieces and doodads like this. Um so I have been putting getting my getting my old cogs turning and I'm um, thinking about different ways that I can use some of these. I think what I'm gonna do is keep these two packs worth together and see what I can make with the two packs I might just throw in the odd bits and other bits and pieces but that's my plan and I also wanted because a couple of people have commented that they just love the look of them it brings out you're in a magpie doesn't it but they don't sew and I thought well it'd be quite fun to come up with some ways some no sew ways of using these beautiful pieces so I've got a few ideas in the pipeline um, we can make a boho beads and tassels you can do that without any sewing um, and they're lovely on all kinds of um, projects on your art journals and things like that there's also um, a few mobile ideas for mobiles that I've got that I think we could do we could do some definitely that would involve stitching but some that don't involve stitching and also um, a way of collaging these fabrics to make um, either small things like cards or or framed pieces so I've got all kinds of ideas going on so if if you have got one of these packs to play with and you're not now not sure what to do first or um, if you want an excuse to get one of these packs but you don't like sewing <laughs> I've also got a few stitching ideas that I want to do as well of course you don't have to go out and get a bizarre scrap pack to 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 join in with any of these projects you know you just um if you've got loads of uh, if you've got a big stash of fabric scraps already drag them out and get have them ready and then you'll be able to join in and uh, stitch along with me if you, if you want to. So what I'm going to do is start um, a no sew project and a sewing project at the same time so um, you'll be able to join in with either or both of those. The only other thing at the moment um, fabric wise I'm going to one of the stitching projects is going to be a small quilt like a really small quilt that you know could be completed reasonably quickly but you could make it bigger if you wanted to. Um, and I think for that you'd want some kind of backing fabric. What would be ideal 
is I'm going to fat quarter if you if you wanted to go and get something especially or if you've got an old pillowcase that would be just a perfect size that's probably what I'll use something like that um, I've also got some of this lightweight fusible interfacing so whether you do you want to join in with a stitching project or a non-stitching project it would be handy to get some of this so this just irons on if you've not seen it before if you're not a sewer you might not have um it's sort of smooth on one side and you can feel a texture on the other side and that texture is is a glue really so you you make sure you've got it the right way around <laughs> glue side to the fabric and you iron it on and that um if you use that on the finer kind of silk pieces this is a medium weight one um, it will help to give them a bit of stability and make them more manageable and less likely to fray if you want to cut shapes out of them. So that will be really handy as well, especially for the for the silks. If you've got some uh, scrap packs from Bazaar and you, you're now sort of not sure what to start on, this will help. If you haven't got, if you've got all kinds of other scraps, Bring together any scraps of fabric, even quite tiny scraps of fabric. Also, odds and ends of ribbon. Again, even quite sure if you just had a little piece of ribbon like that. Put them all together because these projects are going to be just the thing. There will be other bits and pieces. Um, I think um, a fabric glue would be really good. Something like Fabri-Tac. We'll need other odds and ends like um, wire. Something like a, something that you can bend easily with your hands, like a florist wire or something like that would be ideal but yeah I just thought I'd give you a little bit of heads up that that's coming and also I just wanted to mention while I've got you here so you probably if you're a regular viewer you will know this already if you if you uh, make an order from Bazaar if you put a message to the seller at the end arty farty any treat arty farty any treat I'll put it on the screen here um, they will put an extra little doodad in with your order you can also put in the promo code bit you can put bizarre free postage and you get free postage on orders over 30 pounds now a couple of people two or three people actually have mentioned to me that they couldn't find anywhere to put that message in so i'm going to show you now so um here's the bizarre website i will put a link to them below um so you go to the shop from the drop down you pick crafts and in crafts you'll find this little bit which is the scrap bags they're 14.50 each um you, they've just gone up to 14.50 from 12.50 i still think that's an absolute bargain obviously you know it's a little bit hit, hit and miss what you get but i've never ever been disappointed pick which of the colorways you want green blue pink black red or purple so say i picked a green one and i put it in my cart i'm just going to show you now how you would where you would put your message in. So I'm clicking on there to see what's in my cart. I go view cart. Now, here's it. So here's where um, it will list all of the items that you've put in your cart. You can see some tiny red writing here. This says enter a promo code. That is where you would put bizarre free postage and apply it oh and it's telling me I can't because I'm I've not hit the 30 pounds mark so orders above 29.99 that's fair enough and here underneath this it says add a note instructions special request blah 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 add them here and this is where you would put arty farty any treat okay so um Let's take let's take that out. It can be quite a problem for small businesses when people have started a cart, put stuff in a cart if they've only got limited numbers of things. You can put you know you could put something in your basket on Etsy and it's stuck there. Nobody else can buy it. <laughs> but if you don't go in and complete the purchase, it, yeah. So I've sort of got myself. Once I heard that, I got myself in the habit of always emptying my. If I do something like that and I change my mind or think oh I'll come back to that later, I I take I empty the basket before I go. Okay, so. Um, I just wanted to show you that so because it would be a shame for anybody to miss out and it's just you know what they send you is it's random it would just be some little doodad some people have had uh, balls of um, wool they do this these lovely um, uh, hand spun wools made out of um, recycled fibres whoops so, so some people have had those they've had little uh, uh, block 
little, little stamping blocks for, for printing on fabric and things, or, or paper. Um, what else have people had? All, all kinds, all kinds of little things. A little um, pots of sequins. It will just be, it depends on what they've got around. It depends on what you've ordered. You know, they'll just play it by ear. And I don't want anybody to miss out. It'd be such a shame. Okay, right. So um, let's have a look at Golden Hands. I've already been going on for 13 minutes. I'll have to cut that down a bit. <laughs> I've had a couple of not very nice comments recently about me chatting too much and uh, and some some of you lovely guys out there made me feel so much better by saying really kind things about it and uh, so I, yeah, I've got over myself now you know I'm very lucky most of the time you know it, it feels it just feels like like you guys out there are, are my friends sitting in my craft room with me and I'm chatting away and 99.9 percent .9 of the time all the comments I get are positive um I get very few thumbs down and things and you know I'm so it's really you know I'm, I feel very lucky and that kind of thing really keeps me motivated it means a lot to me you know you don't hear me saying I don't tend to say please like and subscribe I don't, I don't think I've ever done it and um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't mean a lot to me it really does and uh, yeah you just get the the old negative thing like that and it catches you on a bad day it just you know but today I'm, I'm over I'm over it and I'm not gonna stop chatting I just can't Right, shall we have a look at golden hands rather than my face? Okay. Right, so um, as I say, for anybody that doesn't know, this came out in the 70s. 75 weekly parts. And it's all kinds of needle crafts. Um, and, and actually such a good um, source of reference still. Because, you know, all the, the stuff they talk about still works you know it doesn't it doesn't change just because it's uh how how old now so this was 19 1970 it first came out i believe uk 22 and a half p <laughs> we would still have been converting it to old money at that stage yeah so this this is the yeah second edition when the first edition came out we wouldn't have gone decimal yet i think we went decimal in february of 71 i remember the day I had an argument with the uh, the guy in the shop. I'm chatting again with the guy in the shop shop on the corner on the way to school, um, who was selling. I used to like fruit salad chews, and they used to be four for an old penny. We still had halfpennies and farthings when I was a kid, so they were four for an old penny. The next day, they were four for a new penny, and I said, "But a new penny is worth like twice as much as an old penny. I should at least be getting six, in, rather than you know, if not eight choose for a new penny he wasn't having it it's all 10 year old me <laughs> face off with the corner shop guy <laughs> i didn't win making blouses it's all used for tailored waistcoat making blouses with a perfect fit applique right i'm going to whip through a bit quicker so i'm going to make myself stop about halfway through so let's say i'm going to stop that is going to be the last one speed up a bit so this is the, the knitting stitches they're doing are more um getting more complicated now different kinds of mock cable twisted rib sounds like an injury doesn't it it's easy to make crisp and easily laundered placemats or tray cloths with these metal metal patterns oh those are metal patterns hmm Applique. I like that pattern. I like the colours. It makes me think of Bieber. It was also a 70s icon. Me modern design called Mexican Sun. Combining applique and simple embroidery stitches. Mm. It's the hand stitching bits that appeal to me most in this book now and the, and the crochet. Mm. You've got the whole chart for it as well. Tatting. I did get. I found my tatting shuttle. I'm going to get it. Here it is. Still with the <laughs> use crochet like crochet cotton in it. Still with the crochet cotton in there. So um, yeah, I could if you fancy uh, see me have a go at uh, tatting again. Give me a shout. I quite fancy trying this. I remember going to evening classes in the like late 70s to learn how to do that. 
expensive blouse, the dressmaking, all that, you know, learning how to fit to your shape. And the, the previous episode showed you how to take proper measurements and things. Really useful still. I always love these drawings. £1.88 for all the materials you need. That would have been a lot of money then, though. <laughs> if you do not wish to cut your copy of Golden Hands, please write out your order on a sheet of paper. <laughs> Just be doing it online now, wouldn't you? Because we'd never even heard of such a thing as the internet in those days. Snip strip covering a, a coat hanger. You'll need a wooden coat hanger. Oh, it's quite a nice thing to do, actually, still. And I quite like to make a little... Uh, little bag with lavender in to go on it as well. That's okay, that's quite a nice gift thing. Patchwork. Oh, I bet that's when I started that piece of patchwork I've still got. I've used it up in the slow stitching projects because I never finished it. Say goodnight to Sasha. Stop me, stop me if you want to look a better look at anything. <laughs> These are like little fried eggs. I don't think they're meant to be little fried eggs, are they? It's a single narcissus. Nice little ledging. I'd like to build up, um, I'd like to try all of the crochet, crochet stitches that they go through and all of the hand embroidery stitches that they go through and build up a little sampler of both. That'd be quite fun to do. Oh, designing symmetrical patterns by cutting out shapes from folded paper. Oh, right, okay. Yes, yeah, that's an idea, isn't it? blouses see-through patchwork templates eight for only one pound and eight pence this week a wardrobe case what's a wardrobe case oven gloves snip strips a bit bigger this time oh look mobiles i was just talking about mobiles so maybe i'll refer to this to see how to make the um i don't think that's fully explained because how is this attached to that and how would this be attached to the ceiling Hmm. Oh, I love that dress. I would have, I would have loved that dress then. What about applique? More knitting stitches. A lovely picture. So these are different crochet borders. Oh, borders to take ribbons so you can slot the ribbon through. Pretty. I have got such a lot of crochet cotton and I've got some in really lovely bright colours that would look quite nice in bright colours that would sort of update it wouldn't it and this is that I guess you how you could use those folded paper you're know, cutting into folded paper to make symmetrical designs that's the kind of thing you could come up with isn't it oh yes they actually show you the diagram for how to cut the pattern oh I love these collector's pieces I wasn't so keen on that owl one but I love, I love things like this where they yeah, showing some of the stitches and the materials used. This is based on a 17th century engraving of the Great Fire by Fisher. <laughs> There's even a little cat on the wall. <laughs> some things never change. Bed spreads and bed heads. Oh, look at that rabbit. Oh, I wouldn't mind making that rabbit. That's an, yet another thing I want to do with the um, scrap packs is to make a doll as well um obviously we'll be we'll be stitching for sure <laughs> but uh but it might be quite fun to make a rabbit i love that shape it's very simple isn't it one's great equals one inch but i wouldn't mind doing it that size and not not enlarging it still going through the blouses different kinds of blouses and fitting them and all these these um the nitty-gritty details of how you get a good finish on your garments it's so useful and so well you know the diagrams and the photos are really good and the explanations are really good it's just still like, oh, a flat filled seam yeah oh that's what a, a wardrobe case is oh I see that's quite good I, I would buy that now probably traveling wardrobe look at these pictures i love them applique equals fashion I love that shape, that cat shape she's got on there. All right, 50 patterns for 50p. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I reckon you could update this by doing it in different colours, 
um, maybe making each each of the bobble buttons a different colour or something maybe make this either shorter or longer yeah I reckon yeah I reckon you could make designing your own knits applique pot holders oh, that's quite something to be able to design your own knitwear isn't it don't try and combine too many ideas into one design <laughs> that would be me <laughs> that's very well illustrated <laughs> It's probably finer than double knitting. Oh, look at these borders and braids in crochet. It would be fun to do all of these things and make them into one huge sampler, um, crochet sampler, pin stitch, couching, cording. Oh, that's a bit like I like to whip the stitches, but then I just go in through each stitch once. But this is going through lots of. The, I haven't tried that. I must try that. Lectures piece, different patchwork shapes, how to make fringing, finishing the blouses, oh, buttonholes, my nightmare, buttonholes and zips, oh, always love the, um, the illustrations on this page. Nearly at the end, guys. Oh, that just would have been such a trendy bedroom, <laughs> wouldn't it? Everything matching. The bedspread, the, the valance, <laughs> the chair, the curtains. Everything matching. Matchy, matchy. Ooh, this is interesting. It's worked. So this is an applique with embroidery over the top. Choose a fine in weave fabric such as linen background and white organza for the applique motifs. Wow! You can see where the edges are turned under. It's so because it, the fabric is transparent. It's a lot of work. Very pretty though. Moss stitch rug and cushion. Nice. Could definitely still do that now. Mm -hmm. Being linen with crochet. Oh, so that looks nice still. Oh, different kinds of aprons to hold different kinds of tools and they've even got the applique shapes there that's nice and what's the collective piece this time throughout Tudor times the covers of precious manuscripts and treasured religious books usually the bible were enriched by embroidery and beadwork oh look at that Queen Elizabeth when still a child embroidered two canvas covers one of which she gave to her stepmother Anne of Cleves in 1544 Later, velvet was used and beautiful effects were achieved with decorative embroidery contrasting with the texture of the velvet. Yeah, I bet. Lovely. Bed cover with a flounce. Different kinds of fringing. Oh, look, that's very uh, 70s, isn't it? <laughs> It'd be quite an interesting thing to try if I make some bags. Oh, cute little top. So I could just use these pattern pieces without scaling them up um, as a basis for dolls clothes as well it's a special offer this week only a pound don't forget to hide it away otherwise it would disappear into your husband's toolbox yeah we haven't quite got the hang of uh, the gender equality yet at, that, at this stage <laughs> oh clothes peg soldiers I've got some clothes pegs I never want to make soldiers though quite fancy having a go at uh, peg dolls though that'd be fun wouldn't it Maybe I can make some Indian style peg dolls. That would be another no so project, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, they could be wearing saris and things. Ooh, store that little idea away. Cable, my friend Trina loves cable knitting. And uh, what do you call it with the, when you get the pattern? Is it intarsia? When you knit the pattern in. I quite like the look of that. Maybe not in those colours, but. Crochet pot holders, all oh, drawn thread work. That's something I've not tried, but I've I've often meant to try. All oh, different fabrics, what they all are, what they're called. It's really useful, actually. Some of these I've never heard of. Shally, Melton, I haven't heard of that. A heavyweight wool coating with the shortest nap of any of the napped wools and a felted appearance. Wow, look at all these different ones. 
I'll have a good slow look through this later as well. <laughs> oh look, that was this is very much the thing, these layers with these flounces and stuff. Oh those shoes. Oh, remind me to show you next time. <laughs> I've got two copies of Vogue magazine from the 70s and the reason I've got them is that they've got um, photos of shoes that were designed by my husband when he was an apprentice. He didn't go on to become a fully fledged shoe designer. It's just it was just a phase he was going through. <laughs> but yeah, lovely shoes. OK, different ways of adding lace and finishing slips. God, that a sofa for 14.25. Oh, that would have been all the rage then. Right, last one we're coming to now. A paper fir tree. <laughs> I love how you can still see the pencil. This is so this is my my friends. I got these from my friend who was clearing out some stuff of her mum's, and she knew I would uh, treasure it. So it, I think it just it made it easier for her mum to part with it, knowing that it was going to a good home. That's what she said at the time. Um, and I love that 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 will be her that will be her name there or the address. Perhaps it was the address because it's got a number in front. Although shops, shopping and shibboleths. What's shibboleths? Shops and shopping, 1800 to 1914. Describes all aspects of merchandising and buying and also the early days of dressmaking and ready-to-wear clothes. Morning dress customs and fashions in underwear. Last time I, I did a flip through of this, there was a, um, a book I, I would like to read. It was all about ladies' underwear. <laughs> and this time I quite fancy reading about shop, shopping as well. Lani cloak to crochet. Oh, it's a smocking. Yes, that's beautifully done, isn't it? It wouldn't look like that if I did it. More cabling stitches. Oh, a crocheted cape, eh? All these borders. Look at that. I think I maybe did try smocking once at school. Collector's piece, gallery of fashion. Oh, nice, another nice little toy pattern or lamb this time. The bias cut skirt, your own personal manservant <laughs> for only two pound ninety eight. <laughs> Cross stitch greetings card. <laughs> well, I'm gonna lucky I've made myself stop then because I would have just carried on and on, and I've already been way too long. Oops. So uh, thank you very much for joining me for that. Um, start gathering your scraps and things. Um, if you fancy joining me in a couple of new projects, you could do the slow stitching one or the no sew one. Um, I've got lots of lots of ideas in the pipeline for using up um, all of these scraps. And it's just, yeah, I'll just, I could quite happily just sit and go through those bags and just look at them all and put them away again. But it's much better to actually use them. So if you're stuck for ideas for how to use your your scraps, be they bizarre scrap packs or whatever scraps you've got, look no further. So I will be back in probably a week or so to get started and uh, I'll see you then, if not before. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you again really soon.